Hey, Sergey, you should make a video about all the different greens that are in the grocery store right now. Why? There's so many different things out there and everybody just eats spinach and kale. Done. In front of me, you can see 24 different types of greens that I bought from the local supermarket earlier today. When I went shopping, I specifically chose not to go to a health food store because health food stores aren't available everywhere, but most people around the world have access to some sort of market or grocery store. So this is just a sample, an average sample of the things that are available to everybody. In this video, I wanna break down every one of these greens and tell you how I use them personally. I also wanna talk about the importance of eating a diverse diet specifically as it pertains to green smoothies, salads, you know, a diet rich in greens. I'm gonna assume that everybody watching this video knows what a green smoothie is. It's 2017, green smoothies are a part of pop culture. If you don't know what a green smoothie is, look it up on YouTube. Since green smoothies have become popular, people started knocking them down from time to time. So there's quite a few articles circulating on the internet that are very scary sounding uh, they have titles like, Don't Eat Kale, It'll Kill You, and Spinach Causes Kidney Stones. And they're sort of derailing some people from eating greens, which I think is unfortunate. I've read dozens of these articles, and these articles never give you the full story. So that's exactly what I'm going to do for you right now. It's true. Kale and spinach do have trace amounts of oxalates, which in large quantities can lead to kidney stones. But so do many other types of foods. For example, coffee is the number one type of food that leads to kidney stones. Same with tea and bread and chocolate. And there's a whole list, you could just Google foods that cause oxalates and notice that it's not just kale and spinach. There's lots of different foods that, that lead to that. So it's unfair to pick on greens alone, I think. This oxalate argument is a very crappy argument because in order for any of these chemicals the chemicals within any of these greens to accumulate to an unhealthy degree, you'd have to eat one green day in and day out for months. And even then, it's questionable whether or not you'd experience any ill effect. Eating a diverse diet is very beneficial. I don't need to tell you that. That's pretty common sense. All greens have trace amounts of chemicals in them. This is nature's way of preventing you from eating the same food over and over again. It's also a survival mechanism of the plant. So kale, just like you, wants to live, and it knows that you know if it's too delicious and too tasty, all of it is gonna get eaten. But if it has trace amounts of oxalates or other alkaloids in it, eventually, whether you're eating it or a deer is eating it, our systems will get enough and they'll give us a little sign that says, okay, no more kale. At which point you move from kale to a different ingredient like lettuce and you start eating that. So these trace amounts of oxalates and alkaloids aren't necessarily a bad thing. They're just a survival mechanism and you really shouldn't fear them because the easiest way to avoid them is to just rotate the greens that you put in your diet. One week eat kale and spinach, the next week eat bok choy, the next week do wheatgrass and basil, and so on and so forth. Nature also didn't intend for us to eat the same thing over and over again. I know this is true because of a little thing called seasons. If we lived close to the earth, if we didn't have automobiles and trains and planes and other mechanisms from, for transporting food from one place to another, we'd be forced to eat locally and seasonally. So kale would be in season for a short amount of time and during that time we'd be munching on kale and enjoying it and it'd be awesome. But then it would go out of season and, and we'd be naturally forced to eat something else. This one simple fact tells me that nature intended for us to eat lots of different things, to constantly rotate the things that go into our diet. Eating a diverse diet is very important. Every food, not just the greens on this table, but every food is made up of different nutrients. And when you eat a, a large variety of different foods, you ensure that your body gets enough nutrition to be healthy and happy. And so I really take pride on the fact that I eat a very diverse diet because I feel like it's the best form of health insurance. So if you don't remember anything else, hear this one thing. Don't fear kale and spinach. So with that, let's take a closer look at all of these greens and I'll tell you, you know, what they taste like, what they're called, and how I use them. 
Okay, so the first green on the table is spinach. This is baby spinach. It's readily available everywhere. Uh, it's kind of a beginner green, so it tastes very mild. And if you don't like a strong green taste, this is a good gateway green to all this other stuff. Up next, we have purple kale, this one. We have green kale, and we have dinosaur kale, or Russian kale, or Italian kale, as it's sometimes called. Even though all three of these are kales, their nutritional makeup is gonna vary. So when I talk about rotating greens, it can be as simple as just using a different type of kale in your smoothies, that's enough. Personally, when I make a green smoothie, I blend the whole thing, stem and all, because it's all good for you. It's all got nutrients in it, that kind of thing. Some people choose to strip the leaves and then compost the rest, you know, put that in your smoothie and then throw that away. But I blend it all. Next to the kale, we have our collard greens. And collard greens are my favorite greens to use as wraps because they have, they're like nature's tortillas, right? You could throw the stem away and then you can literally wrap some stuff into it. Especially if you trim the, the stem down a little bit, it'll be more malleable and then you can make nice burritos from it. I invite you to make what I call a gorilla wrap. So you could take a piece of collard, put a banana in there, you know, obviously peeled, wrap it up, and I call that a gorilla roll. It's a nice little green fruit wrap. Tastes delicious. Collard greens are also good in smoothies. They're a bit more advanced than spinach, so be aware that they're gonna have more of a rich chlorophyll taste, but still you can conceal it pretty easily with fruit. So collard greens, great, 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 great green. Moving right along, we have mustard green and a close relative, turnip greens. So mustard and turnip greens are gonna be spicy to the taste which means that you probably don't wanna put these greens in a sweet green smoothie. It's gonna taste a little icky, but no problem. Make a savory green smoothie. Take a spicy green that's like mustard or turnip, mix it with a little avocado, bell pepper, some tomato, and you have a delicious green soup. It's just a savory green smoothie. That's a very good option. And while you're at it, hey, look at this. Everybody knows green onions. Green onions too are greens. And so you could take mustard greens, turnip greens, and some green onions, throw them in a smoothie, uh, and yummy. Tastes good. Right next to that we have some bok choy, some baby bok choy, and some cabbage. Same thing with this. If you're gonna make a, a smoothie out of cabbage or bok choy, it's probably best to not make it sweet because it's gonna taste a little funky. So for greens that have a very strong cabbage-y flavor, I would say keep them savory. Next to the baby bok choy, we have regular bok choy, or as I like to call it, adult bok choy. And this is another great green for savory smoothies, as well as salads. The stem of bok choy Tastes really good, it's kind of sweet. Uh, it tastes really good grated up or chopped up in salads. All right, so moving right along. If you're lucky, you go to the grocery store and you find beets. Those beets, if you're lucky, come with beet greens. And what do most people do? They twist off the beet greens chuck them, and then eat just the beets. But the beet greens are more nutritious than the beets themselves. So, next time you find beets that have their greens still intact, make sure that you slice them off and use them in your smoothies. These are essentially like Swiss chard. They taste almost identical. And, and yet they're different in their makeup from Swiss chard, which is right over here. So, again, when I talk about rotating greens, it's as simple as using Swiss chard one day, yum, and then getting a bonus meal of beet greens the next. Let us talk about lettuce. This is 
green leaf lettuce. This is romaine lettuce. This is red leaf lettuce. And meet my favorite, butterhead lettuce. Look at that, it's so beautiful. Some people would never think to use lettuce in their smoothies, but I'm here to tell you that you should. It's delicious. Sweet or savory, they're good in both. Then we move on to the herbs. Look, we have Italian parsley, which has slightly broader leaves than regular parsley. So this is Italian parsley. This is regular parsley. Those are very delicious in smoothies and really nutritious. Parsley, specifically the parsleys, I feel go really well with blueberries. There's something about the blueberry parsley combination that I really like. But be careful because parsley thickens things. And so if you blend parsley up and let it sit, if you don't eat it right away, it's gonna turn into a very gelatinous pudding that you may never get out of your blender. So if you blend parsley alongside with blueberries or other fruit that's rich in pectin or soluble fiber, just make sure that you either add a little extra water or consume it very quickly after you blend it. Otherwise, like I said, you're gonna have a, a messy cleanup. And next to the parsley, we have cilantro, which is a little bit funky in my opinion in sweet smoothies, but totally divine in savory smoothies. So, you know, make sure you, you use that stuff. It's one of the best greens for taking heavy metals out of the system. And then probably the king or queen of herbs that I like to put in my smoothies is basil. I call it basil bombing. So when I want to add an extra amount of flavor to a smoothie, whether it be sweet or savory, but mostly sweet, I just take a heaping handful of basil, cram it in the blender, and it's just absolutely fantastic. So if you want some homework, Next time you make a smoothie, basil bomb it. And moving right along, we have some dandelion greens, which normally I wouldn't buy at the store because these things grow all over in everybody's yard pretty much. And they're even more nutritious when you harvest them wild than when you buy them. But because the theme of the video is to show you how much diversity there is at the store, I went ahead and splurged. Dandelion greens are a little bitter to the taste, maybe a lot bitter depending on if your taste buds aren't familiar with them. So they pair really well in smoothies that are more on the sweet side. Things like mango, banana, pear. Dandelion greens are also very delicious in a pesto. And I've actually found that when you blend dandelion greens with something oily, whether it be nuts or um, olive oil, or even cheese, that the bitterness somehow complements the taste of the oil and vice versa. So if you wanna get rid of the bitterness of dandelions, make a pesto out of them, cause it's really good. Right next to the dandelions, we have some fennel. This is just like a fennel root with some greens. If I were to blend this up in a smoothie, I would probably use that much in the smoothie and then I would cut this up in a salad or, or do something else with it. Fennel greens aren't for everybody. You have to like the licorice, the black licorice taste, which I happen to. So I would throw this in a sweet smoothie. And a fun little fact, fennel greens help you sleep better. So if you have trouble sleeping, put some of that in a juice, a smoothie, a salad, and just notice that you will be getting more deeper rest. I had a buddy come visit me one time who had insomnia pretty bad. So I took two of these and I juiced them and he chugged, you know, a little cup of this juice and, and actually was sleeping so good that the next day at noon I had to wake him up because I was worried about him because generally he doesn't sleep and on this particular night he did. Finally, as we're wrapping up here, we have wheatgrass and uh, wheatgrass obviously is grass. You've probably seen shots sold at a health food store where it's like $4 for a shot of wheatgrass. You know what? Wheatgrass is awesome in green smoothies, particularly with pineapple. Pineapple cuts the taste of chlorophyll, specifically of wheatgrass chlorophyll, pretty good. You won't even notice that it's in your smoothie 
and yet you'll get all the micronutrients found within the blades of grass. So I would cut it straight off right here into the blender and I would save heaps of dough because this whole thing was about a buck. If you let it grow, it's going to get even taller. And so that's more than a shot of wheatgrass and you're also getting the fiber in it. So it's doing good things for your intestines, colon, stomach, digestive system. And it's also helping slow down how fast the sugars get assimilated. So let's do a quick recap. Green number one, spinach. We have three different types of kale. Purple kale, green kale, dinosaur kale. That's four greens. Then we have collard greens over here, collard greens. Boom. That's five. We have green onions, six. Mustard greens, seven. Turnip greens, that's eight. We have cabbage, that's nine. We have baby bok choy, that's 10. Adult bok choy, 11. We have beet greens, beets, and greens, that's 12. The lettuces, 13, green leaf, 14, romaine, 15, red leaf, 16, butterhead. 17, Swiss chard, mm, yum. 18, dandelion greens. 19, fennel. 20, basil. 21, wheatgrass. 22, cilantro. 23, parsley and 24 Italian parsley. So there you have it. It's as simple as that. There's 24 greens right there that are easily accessible to everyone. You now know the importance of eating a diverse diet because it's rich in all sorts of different micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, that kind of thing. And you also know that the easiest way to prevent alkaloids from accumulating in your system is to rotate your greens. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing to my channel on YouTube, Butenko Films. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video, you're a rock star and you deserve a gold star. Thank you very much for watching.